Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrefil enbiyayi ve mürselin Nebiyyina ve habibina ve imamil muttakiyyina ma ba'd So I wanted to just take benefit as much as we can in this blessed month of Ramadan the last 10 days to mention benefits from a small book by Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr Hafidhullah Ta'ala called Sifat wa Ibad al-Rahman Sifat of Ibadul Rahman. These are the sifat of the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The servants of Allah that Allah is pleased with, the worshippers of Allah. And this is derived from Surah Al Furqan, where Allah mentions Wa Ibadul Rahman. He starts off by saying Wa Ibadul Rahman. And then mentions a number of characteristics of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us of these characteristics for one, for us to adorn ourselves with these characteristics. And secondly, to look forward to the reward prepared for those who have them. And also to ask Allah to make us from them. So the first of those characteristics, the Sifat al is that a person has this tranquility and respect and humility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also towards mankind. That's so why Allah mentions in the beginning وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامٌ عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ The servants of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahman means Allah SWT The one who possesses the most vast mercy The most merciful The one who says about himself رَحْمَتِي سَبَقَتْ غَدَبِي My mercy precedes my Anger. So the worshippers of Ar Rahman, they are those Yamshuna al Ardi Hawna. They walk on the earth in ease, calmly, not in arrogance, not in pride, not boastfully. And when the people of ignorance address them, they respond with salama, in words that do not ignite further dispute or enrage the situation. Rather, they say things that will bring things at ease, calm the situation, respond with words of peace. That's the general approach of the Muslim. But there are times there are those who are deserving of a stern, firm response. That comes with knowledge and wisdom to put things in their proper place. But in general, when people address you in a way of ignorance, you only respond with that which is words of peace. Words that calms the situation. I mentioned, They are those who when they traverse the land in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in chastity and also in humbleness. You're always going to come across people who in have ill manners, may lack respect, have their own problems in their own life, and looking for anyone to make a victim of that. But those who know better, they do better. The Muslims, we are people of rectification. Allah SWT sent Islam to rectify the corruption on the lands of those who are strayed from his guidance. So the Muslim who are Muslim, They are the ones who rectify affairs, bring about that which is in the best of mankind's interest, calling them to worship the one who created them. (laughs) 
also of the thing that is mentioned وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامَ قَوْلًا يَسْلَمُونَ بِهِ مِنَ الْإِثْنِ وَاللَّهُ When they are addressed by the ignorant, they say words of peace, any words that are safe from sin, and also lahu, which is like <coughs> uh, play, ridicule, and the likes, or any form of immorality. Now, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم. Here mentions of in this ayah evil and good are never going to be the same. There's no equality between good and evil. So respond, repel that which is evil with that which is better. <coughs> Always repel and respond with that which is better. So of these things that we understand, أَنَّا فِي أَخْلَاقِهِمْ وَتَعَامُلَاتِهِمْ تَفَاوُتًا عَظِيمًا the people, they fluctuate in terms of their mannerisms and their character with a great difference. You always find people of different ways. You some, Sometimes you meet certain cultures and people, the whole of those people, their temperament is calm. When you meet another people, they're known for being more hot-headed. But a part of mixing of these different cultures and people, what do you learn? You learn how to diff de deal with different types of people. So of the things that is mentioned, when people come and direct evilness towards you, evil or bad character, then you respond with that which is better. Al-Ihsan. That's how you find sometimes there are situations when a person has a bad, negative approach towards you. But that which hurts them the most is a response of kindness. Is a response in a good way. Because now they can't actually comprehend why you're being good to them. And now they become self-reprimanding. I look how I dealt with this person, but look at the response. He start to feel bad. They say, no. These are the things that we have been taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of the thing that's also important, a person is to seek good manners from Allah azza wa jal. <clears throat> Ask Allah to make you of those who have good manners. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam <clears throat> used to say in his du'a al-istiftah when he began the salah, "Ihdini li ahsan al-akhlaq." Guide me to the best of manners. لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت. No one guides to the best of manners except for you. وصرف عني سيئها. Also turn away from me the evil of them, the evil of character and manners. لا يصرف سيئها إلا أنت. Because none turns them away those evil characters, characteristics, and morals except for you. So a person understands Allah is in control of all of the affairs. So they ask Allah to teach them to have the best of manners. Seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we look at ourselves, how many people say, I can't change my ways? I'm not able to change. This is how I am. That if you want to change, you can change. You have to ask Allah to help you. To be no, you have to accept me for who I am. No. If your ways are bad, you need to learn new ways. I'm not obliged to accept that. I'm not obliged to ex accept that you speak in a rude manner. You have to work on that. All I have to do is be patient. But I don't have to accept. 
No, there's a big difference. Also, of the things that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi used to mention, Allahumma a'udhu bika an adulla aw udil aw aw udal aw azilla aw uzal aw adlima aw uzlam aw ajhala aw yujhala alay. Within the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of this, the shahid is, of the things that he sought refuge from, is oppressing or being oppressed, or dealing with people in a way of ignorance, or being dealt with in a way of ignorance. So that's of the very important factors that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave due importance to, teaching us to have the best of manners. Teach us to have the best of manners. And manners is manners between you and Allah, manners between you and the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you and all of Allah's creation. Manners have been established and taught to us by, by way of the Qur'an and the prophetic Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hadith. The second characteristic, Muhafadatuhum ala salah la siyama qiyam al the second characteristic is the preservation of the salah, the prayer, especially the night prayer. Allah mentions, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيْتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا They are the ones who spend their nights in prostration and standing, i.e. in the salah, in prayer. They don't just spend their nights in sleep, they spend their nights praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similar to as we're doing in the month of Ramadan, outside of the month of Ramadan, this is also their ways. This is also from their practices that they stand in prayer during the night. The best prayer after the obligatory prayers is the night prayer. To pray in the night when the people are sleeping. It shows that a person wants guidance. It shows that a person is devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the time that Allah says, Who is asking so I may give? Who is seeking refuge so I grant them refuge? Who is asking for forgiveness I may forgive them? So the Muslim that is from the Ibad al Rahman, they are seeking those opportunities to get that closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Prophet Muhammad has is mentioned to have said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِقِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ فَإِنَّهُ دَعْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ Upon you is the night prayer, for indeed it's the habit of the righteous. It's a custom of the righteous. مِنْ دَعْبِ الصَّالِحِينَ قَبْلَكُمْ وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ And it's a means of gaining closeness to your Lord. وَمَكْفَرَةٌ لِلسَّيِّئَاتِ وَمَنْهَاتٌ لِلْإِثْمِ and it's also of the things that will expiate your sins and, and repel you from evil, from doing disobedience. As we know in the Salah and the prayer, there are the ways that keeps a person upright. In the Salah to Tanhaal al Fahsha al Munkar, the Salah repel, uh, uh, warns against evil and immorality. A person, when they're a person of Salah, a person of prayer, they'll curse themselves. How can I pray to Allah and still do these evil things? And the fact that we pray five times a day throughout the day, we're always checking in. We're always making sure we renew our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not part time. And it's spread out, out throughout the day so a person is never in a state of negligence. Never forgetting Allah. The ones who forget Allah are the people that don't pray. But as for those who uphold the prayer, Constantly they're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of their day, the earliest part of the day, the middle of the day, towards the evening, in the night. Always constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing that is mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَنْزِلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا حِينَ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْآخِرِ 
يقول من يدعوني فاستجيب له من يسألني فأعطيه ومن يستغفرني فأغفر الله It mentions it in this hadith During the last fight of the night Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down to the last heaven And he mentioned who is calling upon me that I will answer them Who is asking of me that I may give them Who is seeking my forgiveness that I may forgive them so it's not the thing that's important for a person to have a portion or a dedicated time or custom of praying in the night. And the Prophet Muhammad used to pray in the night, he would pray until his feet would crack. The sole of his feet would crack. And when he was asked about why he's doing this to himself when his sins have been forgiven, he said, should I not be Afala Akunu or Awala Akunu Kunu Abdan Shakura? Afala Akunu Abdan Shakura, should I not be a grateful servant? So a person exerting his efforts in worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sign of gratitude. A sign of gratitude. Also, from the third characteristics of them. Their fear from the punishment of the hellfire. As I mentioned, Those who say, Oh, our Lord, turn us away from the punishment of the hellfire. For indeed, his punishment is severe. His punishment is severe. Indeed, it is the worst dwelling place. The worst dwelling place. The person has is it going to have the dwelling place being in the hellfire. And that's why Allah mentioned, "What the dina yutu na ma ata wa kulubuhum wajilatun annahum ila rabbihim." I mean, those who they come with all the different types of worship and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whilst their hearts are trembling, fearful of what? That they're going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe they'll be deserving of punishment. Maybe they'll be granted paradise. They don't, they can't guarantee what their situation is going to be. But they have hope and they have fear. Also, Aisha Anha, she asked regarding this ayah, and she said to the Prophet, Are they the ones who drink alcohol and drink the water? Are they the ones who drink alcohol and the ones who drink alcohol and steal? Is this who he's talking about? Those who are fearful and they're going to, they're going to go back to Allah SWT? He said, La. Ya bint al-Siddiq Walakin hum al-ladhin yasumun wa yasallun wa yasaddaqun wa hum yakhafun alla tukbala minhum They are the ones who they fast they pray they give charity but they fear is not going to be accepted from them They fear hasn't been accepted No one can say I can guarantee my actions are accepted by Allah but we have hope for this but we still have the fear that it's not accepted. That's why we do more actions. So we ask God to accept our actions. It also saves a person from deceiving themselves to be better than others. Also, it mentions قال الحسن البصري رحمه الله المؤمن جمع إحسانا وشفقة so the believer combines between doing good and fear. As for the monafiq, the hypocrite, jama'a isa'atan wa amna. As for the hypocrite, they combine between doing evil and thinking that they are secure and safe from punishment. 
And he mentioned, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ خَشَّةِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ The ones who, from the fear of the Lord, they're in awe. Also was mentioned, as for the munafiq, you see the amal. وَهُوَ مَعَ ذَلَكَ آمِنٌ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ غَيْرُ مُشْفِقٍ بِخِلَافِ الْمُؤْمِنِ As for the hypocrite, then this one is evil in their actions, yet they feel like they are saved from any form of punishment. And that's why they do these transgressions of evil, because they feel that there's no consequence. That's why Allah mentions about the believers. أولئك الذين يدعون يبتغون إلى ربهم الوسيلة أيهم أقرب ويرجون رحمة ويخافون عذابه إن عذاب ربك كان محذورا. These are the ones that call upon Allah subhanahu wa taala, seeking closeness to Allah azza wa jalla. Which of them is closer to Allah, hoping for His mercy, fearing His punishment? Indeed, his punishment is something that was warned against, cautioned from, feared. And that's why I mentioned in the dua, Rabbana nasrif anna adab jahannam. Oh, our Lord, turn away from us the punishment of the hellfire. وَكَانَ مِمَّا يَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلٍ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلٍ The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Oh Allah, I ask you for Jannah and what would draw me near to it from statements and actions, and I seek refuge in you from the hellfire and what would make me deserving or draw near to it from statements and actions. In Adabaha Kana Gharama, talking about the punishment of the hellfire, Kana Gharama in Ida Iman. Mulayan is Iman. It's for, it's not, it's everlasting. That punishment of the hellfire is everlasting. It's continuous. It doesn't come to an end. In Ha Sa'at Mustaqarra wa Muqama, Bits al Mustaqarra, or Bits al Khulud. This is the worst dwelling place that a person will have. That their final abode will be the hellfire. Then it's mentioned the fourth characteristic, tawassutuhum fi nafaqa. The balance that they have in terms of spending. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا They are those who, when they spend their wealth, they do not go overboard, nor are they miserly. They're in the middle path. They don't go in. They don't spend in extravagance. I've travelled sometimes, and I've gone to a restaurant. And if I was by myself, I might have said, "You don't want that." <laughs> For the amount of extra plates they have, that I might not even need to order a meal. And they're about to leave, and you realize how much food has been left. And sometimes, Allah Almost, and people order for the sake of it. I was going to try everything on the menu. But you know, you're not going to eat a third of that. And what happens after it's been prepared? Where does that food go? It goes wasted. Of the things that I saw in Kuwait that was amazing, in corners of the streets, they have big fridges. Like on the street, there'll be a huge fridge. So if there's food that someone doesn't want, they go and put it in the fridge. And those who are needy and the likes, expat workers, they will go and take those meals. Amazing. So you're not thinking about throwing food away. You're going to take that food and take it to one of those fridges. That's publicly accessible. Even if you want to do sadaqah, you know you can do it and go and put it in that fridge. May Allah preserve dollar to commit. I mean, in the home, 
they have scholars there, khidma, bi ahliya, there's service for the people. But that's one of the things that stood out for me, seeing fridges that people can go and get food if they're hungry. Or when you go for Umrah and you see some of the restaurants that you go and you eat from in Mecca and Medina, they have a service where they have a similar meal that you would have had for yourself at a very discounted price for you to pay for people's meals and they'll distribute it at a certain time of the day. Why? Concern for who? Concern for those who are in need. Islam teaches, well, I can't have a full belly, my, my neighbor's starving now. Nah. Whether they're Muslim or not. This is Islam. But one thing, people don't go in extravagance. Most people that go in extravagance is not for themselves, it's always to show off to someone else. Impressionists and the likes. So, Galatians In the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentions لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن علمه فيما فعل وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه In this hadith it mentions on the day of judgment, the feet of the servant of Allah are not going to move. They're not going to move anywhere until they're asked about their life and how they spent it. <coughs> their knowledge and what they did with it. Their wealth, how they earned it and how they spent it. And their body and how they used it. All of these things you're going to be questioned about by the one who created you. The one who sustained you. The one who taught you. Is going to question you about your knowledge, your wealth, and your body. How did you use these things that were given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's what a person has to reflect. There's going to come a time, they're going to be held accountable for all of these things. Also, the thing that's mentioned and Ka'b ibn Farrukh and Qatada and Mutadrif ibn Abdullah قال خير هذه الأمور أوصاتها والحسنة بين السيئتين It mentions the best of these matters are the middle of them always the middle balanced ground and they ask what is that? It's a, the goodness is surrounded by two evils. What does that mean? And you mentioned, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُلُوا Those who when they spend, they don't go in extravagance, nor are they miserly. They are balanced. They're in the middle ground. Now, the fourth characteristic, the fifth, sorry, the fifth characteristic of them is بُعْدُهُمْ عَنْ كَبَائِدِ الْذُنُوبِ their distance from major sins and the most detested of sins. قال الله تعالى والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون. They are the ones who do not call upon anyone other than Allah. They do not make any partners with Allah. They do not worship anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor do they take the lives of others unjustly. So it's forbidden to take life unjustly. And life taken unjustly is only done for a judicial system, not just by 
a random z no no do they fornicate these are the things of the major sins so the one who is from the ibad or rahman they stay away from these major sins the worst of the all major sins is ash shirk and that is to worship other than Allah, to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa Then, قَتْلُ النَّفْسِ الْمَعْصُومِ Taking a life that is protected by the Sharia. Taking any life that is not to be permitted to be taken. As I mentioned, life that's permitted to be taken is only via the, a judicial system of the Sharia. Not that anyone has the right to take someone's life. Abdullah. Was zina fornication. Also, anything that leads to these sins has been prohibited. So they will also avoid those matters as well. And the gravity of a shirk worshipping other than Allah, this is the one sin that Allah has promised He will never forgive. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُشْرِقْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Allah has mentioned, He does not forgive that anyone associates partners with Him, but He forgives other than that for whomsoever He goes. Now, does that apply just to Muslims? Because the non-Muslims do not want to be forgiven anyway. So, the Muslim, those who are not Muslim, that's, the, that's people of shirk. Because they're worshipping other than Allah. Now, so a person to die in that state, that would never be forgiven, no matter how good you think you are. And that's one of the things that when you give da'wah, for example, when you teach people about Islam, they'll say, well, this person is a good person. So, okay, we ask, when we weigh goodness, in whose perspective are we weighing goodness? Allah. That's the one who created you. Allah. Because if it was left to mankind, everyone will have their own definition of what is good. A thief who steals from the rich and gives to the poor. He's a good man. He's a good man. <laughs> Robin Hood. That's what we heard growing up, right? Robin Hood was uh, a role model for many growing up. Where I come from anyway. So they will justify those actions with Robin Hood, isn't it? But what does that mean is good? Even if what you're doing is good, outside of the initial part, the consequences you believe is good, the process isn't good. Because of the things that the Sharia governs is life, wealth, and aql. Your mind, now, or nafs, life, that damn blood. So it's not permissible to take someone else's wealth. Unjustly. Wealth is protected. Now. So no matter who you're giving that money to, uh, if, if you say, I'm giving it to my mom, she got a surgery. But it's not your money. It's not your mom's money either. So it would never be praiseworthy for you to do that. You see? So... Sorry, sorry. So, but is it for after death that shirk is not forgiven? If you, can you still seek repentance? If you commit shirk now, you can seek forgiveness before you die and you'll be forgiven. But if you die in that state, it will never be forgiven. And that's the one sin that is like that. Allah says, وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah forgives other than that for whomsoever he goes. So from that we have hope. No matter how much sin you've done, if you turn back to Allah sin sin and forgiveness, he will forgive you.
Or, or a person, a believer, may be shown their place in the hellfire and their place in Jannah, but go to the hellfire for a time to serve punishment. They may be deserving of punishment. So after when we yom kiyama, if that was your place and Allah asked, they can Allah, but did they possibly be still be forgiven? Even if you after the punishment of the grave. Allah may forgive you. No. Yeah, Allah may forgive you. If for your if for what you have of Islam. Because you still have to go through the accountability of Yom al Qiyamah. Yeah. You see? But as for what happens in the grave, that is a taste of what awaits in the hereafter. But it doesn't mean that the believer who may who may be punished in the grave doesn't mean they'll definitely be punished in the hereafter of Yom al Qiyamah. No. Nah. If Allah wills, he may forgive them. But the thing is, we don't know this on a specific basis. I can't say, yeah, you are 100% you're going to get punished. You know, that's only known to Allah's point of view. Also, of the things that is mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. لَزَوَالَ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ قَتْلِ مُؤْمِنٍ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ It mentions for Allah to get rid of the whole world is easier for him than a believing servant being killed unjustly for Allah to get rid of the whole world is easier for him than the life being taken unjustly to show how grave this sin is. Now, if you need to go, you can go. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fair. Yeah. Also, إِذَا زَنَ الرَّجُلُ قَالَ مِنْ سَلَمْ إِذَا زَنَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْهُ خَرَجَ مِنْهُ الْإِيمَانِ وَكَانَ عَلَيْهِ كَذُّلَّهِ فَإِذَا قَطَعَ رَجَعَ إِلَيْهِ الْإِيمَانِ this also shows the severity of zina. When a person is committing zina, at that point, the iman leaves him. And it remains like a, a stain upon that person, like a shadow over that person. The stain of that sin. And when they leave it off, that's when the iman comes back to that person. That shows the severity of zina. And of the worst is that a person may die in that state. Because who told you you know when you're going to die? And you go out of your way to go and commit haram, and then you're in a state you're going to commit zina, and then khalas, Allah decrees that death comes to you in that time. يوم القيامة. In that state is how you're going to be resurrected on the Day of Judgment. Just like that. The way you die is how you will be resurrected before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also regarding these types of sins, what does Allah say? Whoever does that, will Those who go for these sins, whoever does this, will, will meet a great punishment. And it will be, their punishment will be multiplied on the Day of Judgment. Their punishment will be multiplied on the Day of Judgment. And they will remain therein in shame and humiliation. Then look at the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except for those who believe, except for those who seek forgiveness, taba. Seek forgiveness. And also, amana. Amana, they believe. Wa amila amalan salihah. They do righteous actions. 
فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ They are the ones who Allah SWT exchanges their bad deeds to good deeds. Can you imagine you sin for 15 years and then you sincerely turn back to Allah SWT, seek His forgiveness, start to do righteous actions. From Allah SWT's mercy, those 15 years of sin will be exchanged to 15 years of hasanat. Again, as I said the other night, what do you have to worry about? Why do we put ourselves in a situation where we become so depressed thinking that we are certainly destined for punishment? Or that we've done too much to ask Allah to forgive us when Allah has told us this? And the one who seeks forgiveness and is sincere and believes and unrighteous actions Allah will exchange that time of sin will be recorded for him as time of goodness. Is that spoken to God? Yeah, now. Why? Wa kana Allahu ghafurur rahim. Allah is forgiving and merciful. The sixth characteristic of them they distance themselves from the gatherings of falsehood and evil. Those are the ones who do not bear false witness. And false witness is idle speech, evil speech, false speech bearing any form of false witness as well. And when they walk up, when they walk by idle speech, they walk by in a way that is honorable. In an honorable fashion. So they don't sit with the people of evil. They don't sit with the people of Riba when the Nima backbiting and slandering was Sukhriya and ridicule. Well Kedib, the people of lying. They don't, they don't sit with those people. There are some people, Allah must only love to lie too much. And of the worst, worst characteristics a person can have is that you're known to be a liar. Lying is like, a, it's like it, has a, it has a foul stench. Literally, liars, they stink. You don't want nothing to do with them. They have a very foul stench. And... Muslim said in in al mar in al insan la yakdab la yakdab wa yatahar al kadib hatta yuktab in Allah kadhab. He mentioned iyak wa al kadib. Fi al kadib yahdi ila al fujur, wa al fujur yahdi ila al nar. So that warn you against lying, for indeed. It, it encourages a person towards immorality, towards evil. And that immorality and evil will guide a person towards the fire. Which a person will lie and seek to lie until they're written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. That is one of the easiest ways to lose all your friends. To be a liar. When a person is a liar, the thing that is lost first is all forms of trust. All forms of trust. When you are a liar. And there are some people, they have no shame. They, they say they lie through their teeth. Through their teeth, they lie straight. Sad. And of the most dangerous things as well, that a child is raised upon this characteristic. That a child lies, and the parent teaches the child to lie, and the parent lies in front of the child, so they learn that behavior of lying from the parent, then they grow up to be a, a liar. And what's the danger of lying? Why is it so dangerous? Because the people lie against the last one to Allah. Allah 
There are some people, they can't help themselves. Liars. And even when you find you get what you want, you win whatever cases you're involved in because you're lying. Just remember the case when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the truth will manifest. As did with Yusuf alayhi salam. When the right time comes, the truth will manifest. A person may be afflicted with the consequences of people lying against them. But it is guaranteed at a moment of time the truth will manifest. If it's not in this life, certainly when? In the hereafter. So whenever you hear people backbiting, slandering and lying, flee. Never share gatherings with those people again. No matter how close they appear to you, how, how much of their character is praised of you, when they have those characteristics, flee for your life. Because that's the worst of people, the backbiters, the slanderers. And even the slanderers, they are liars. It's a form of lying. Those who say things about a person that's not the truth. This is the worst type of backbiting. As a means of ifsad. Wallahu <coughs> musta'ala. May Allah rectify our first. Also, yeah, might I have no friends after that. You know what? To be by yourself and be upon the truth is better than to have one friend who's a liar. If you have liars around you, don't take them as your friends. No way. What is the benefit of having a liar as a friend? People that are liars around you make you overthink. Everything you're gonna do, they're gonna tell you, you're gonna ask questions. Imagine you go to their house for dinner, it's halal, you don't even know if they say yes or no. Imagine. You have to go check the bin, where's the packet? Allah must have. Imagine having to question these things. Because someone lies. How can you function around people like that? Now, may Allah give us good companions. I mean. Your good companions, where do you go? To the masjid. And you look for the people of righteousness. And you stick by them. As for the liars, you see them and you put a mask on and you keep it stepping. They are like COVID, dangerous plague. Liars bring about problems in your life. See, go the opposite direction. Danger. And lying is of the day is from the part of the way the person said the Muslims are to be safe from this, the town. It's from the dangers of the town, lying. How much blood's been shed due to lies? Lies. Someone says something. Without affirming, they get in their feelings and plan to do something. <clears throat> they go and do something now, and what happens? Someone gets hurt. Either one who was emotionally enraged based on a lie, or the one who was the liar. I saw something once, of recent, a father dying because of the life of the child. 
the lifestyle of the child, choosing to be on the streets and the like. And a lot of these cases, what do you find? The children's always lying to who? Their parents. Pretend to live a good life. Or when they're in danger, they call their parents, thinking that the parents can help them, and they won't give the full story. So what happens? The parents want to protect who? Their child. But lives end up lost because of this. They have to fear a last one time. Or a brother has got himself in a situation. So what does he do? Calls brothers, I need help, asking you know what's up. But we don't know him that well, we don't know him from domestic. But he's taking advantage now. And he sells you a story that he's being oppressed. And you come now, and it's a wrong kind of crowd. It's a bad crowd. Someone gets hurt, someone might even up dead. And what happened? He found out the brother had done something wrong and was deserving of whatever he got. When we was younger, we were in Islam, as Muslims, when I became Muslim, someone calls you as a Muslim, you jump up, you don't even ask questions. But then you go through experiences, you come to realize, hold on a minute. All right, cool, Akhi, you called me. What is the situation? Tell me. Oh, you know, my child in school, something's happened. All right, cool. What's your child like? I need to know. I'm not just jumping up now. Because it also becomes embarrassing when you get older. And why am I going to secondary school for? For kids. When we know how kids are today. When parents are going to lie and know my child is good, I know. I don't know, there's been situations. Parents, they are so shocked when they find out the reality of how the child lives. Or as soon as they leave the house, it's a different person. They say, I don't know this child. And it's from lying, lying to yourself for one and lying to others. Dangers of lying. How many people encourage people to hate others because of lies? And cause if sad problems in the community. I lie to you, <clears throat> whisper about a person. That person does this, that, that, that. This person did this to me. And it's a lie. But when those people hear it, they're shocked and be like, how? How can someone do such a thing? And they have bad feelings towards you. But then it doesn't stop there. It keeps going around to you. Many people hate a certain person. And it's all based on what? A lie. Allah I saw an embarrassed thing one time. These silly podcasts. Sisters should never do podcasts as well. Sisters should never, if you're a practicing Muslim woman, don't do podcasts. You don't need to do podcasts. Do a podcast in your house with your sister that's not recorded. But not public podcasts. There's no need for you to be out there. Among sister circles. You can talk among sister circles, but I'm talking about publicly. No. You see, they want to do a podcast, what happens? Next one, they start talking about affairs that's got nothing to do with them. And you see the evil that comes from that. But just to show you the embarrassing thing that I saw once, they're talking about a sister lied. Lied to someone that she was having an affair with another sister in order for the husband to divorce her. So she contacted someone that worked in her friend's husband's workplace to say that she had an affair with her sister at the husband's workplace only to get the husband to divorce her. And it was based upon a lie. It was all a lie. What was the objective? To get them divorced.
So look at the gravity of something that's done with what? The tongue. Just the tongue. So it's very important that people pay close attention to the Prophet's statement. Al Muslim, man salim al Muslimun, min lisanihi wa yadi. The Muslim who is the one who Muslims are safe from their tongue and their hand. Anyone who comes to bring you news about a person, be harsh. Say, get out of my face. Literally, tell them, get out of my face now. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People will be thrown in the fire by their face because of what you're doing. Be very stern with them. If they say, I don't like you, say, Alhamdulillah. Don't even say why. Say, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khairan. I actually need that. Now you can stay away from me. Rather than appeasing everyone. Don't appease people. There are some miserable people in life. They depend on other people's companionship. So what do they do? They do everything to appease others. Everything to appease people. These are also the worst of people. You need people that only stand for the truth. Even if it's against themselves. These are the best of people. Their objective is that the haq is always manifest. Not to save face. La. Someone they know and like is in the wrong. Don't be like, oh, but I, I, I. no, see it. You're wrong. Don't defend them. Don't defend them. You're wrong. Simple as. Now that you've established you're wrong, then we can go on to the next stage of solution. Rectification, reconciliation. But we cannot get to that stage until we go through the process of acknowledging. Acknowledge that you're wrong, then we can move on. Class. Simple. It's not hard. But what makes things these hard make things harder? The backbiting, the slandering, the lying, the tail carrying, the speaking to others that it has nothing to do with. People being long nose, they always want to smell other people's business. Yeah, it's wrong. These things all cause facade. It's something they can't help themselves. And you wonder how they sleep at night. So these are things that a person to be cautious of. Never sit in gatherings that speak about matters displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are built upon characteristics that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. Because when you're around those gatherings where people are backed by the slandering, if you don't remove yourself from those gatherings or warn against it, then you're just as bad. Rather, you actually participate in the sin. Because your duty is to show that you do not approve of this. And if you're not able to stop it with your hand, or stop it with your tongue, then you need to remove yourself out of that gathering. The seventh condition or characteristic of them is تَعْظِيمُهُمْ لِكَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلُ وَعَمَلُهُمْ بِمَا فِي Those who really honor and glorify the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa mentions, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا سُمَّا وَعُمْيَانَ They are the ones who, when they are reminded of the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does not fall on deaf and blind individuals. They don't turn away in a way of deafness or blind to it. لا. They take heed. They benefit from this. When they hear it, they don't act like they're deaf. When they see the signs of Allah, they don't act like they're blind. Rather, they listen attentively to the guidance of the Qur'an and they act upon it. When they see the signs of Allah, it increases their certainty. Now. But not to be like the one who Allah mentions, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَقِلَّهَا أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ 